Symbol of the Illuminati. When Weishaupt founded the Order of the Illuminati, he adopted the all-seeing eye symbol of masonry, to be the symbol of the organization. It is the Great Pyramid of Cheops, with the capstone missing, and replaced with an eye. The all-seeing eye can be traced back to Chaldea as the solar eye, the eye of Jupiter or Apollo, or the eye of Providence. Hieroglyphics in ancient Egypt identified the name of the chief sun god Osiris with a human eye. On July 4, 1776, Thomas Jefferson, a mason and illuminist, John Adams, a mason, and Ben Franklin, a mason and Rosicrucian, were appointed by a committee of the Continental Congress to prepare the Great Seal of the United States to signify that the 13 states had united in an act of independence. After some preliminary work by another, William Barton submitted an eagle on the pinnacle of a Doric column, the all-seeing eye, and the stars, representing a new constellation, or new empire. Barton's second design pushed the all-seeing eye to the reverse side, and moved the eagle up to the crest, and placed a phoenix, a mythical bird that would be consumed with fire of its own volition, then be resurrected out of its own ashes, which was the Egyptian symbol of regeneration used by the Rosicrucians, rising from the flames at the column's summit, which was to indicate the revival of the new, America, out of the old, England. This design was accepted on May 9, 1782 and referred to Charles Thompson, a mason, the Secretary of Congress on June 13. The final version, approved and adopted by an act of Congress on June 20, 1782, was the result of a series of committee meetings which combined ideas from Barton, Thompson, and Jefferson, who placed a triangle around the eye, added the year 1776, e pluribus unum, the olive branch on the front, stars above the eagle, and other things. Within weeks, a brass plate of the face of the Great Seal was produced, but not the reverse side. Although the design of the seal was not to deviate from the one approved, when the original wore out, and a second engraving in 1841 was ordered by Secretary of State Daniel Webster. The design by French artist R. P. Lamplier and cut by John V. N. Throop had many subtle differences, such as six, rather than thirteen arrows, and the phoenix clearly became an eagle. Referred to as the Websterian Great Seal, it was used until 1885. The third engraving was prepared in 1885 under Secretary of State F. T. Frelinghuysen and cut by Tiffany and Co., and the fourth engraving, under Secretary of State John Hay, engraved by Max Zeiler, and cut by Bailey, Banks and Biddle, were both consistent with the design passed by law in 1782. A committee appointed by Frelinghuysen, consisting of Theodore F. Dwight, Chief of the Bureau of Rolls and Library of the State Department, Justin Windsor, historian, Charles Elliot Norton, Harvard professor, William H. Whitmore, genealogist, John Dennison Chaplin Jr., associate editor of American Cyclopedia, and James Horton Whitehouse, designer for Tiffany & Company in New York City decided that a die for the reverse side of the seal would not be produced and used as an official seal. Norton called it a dull emblem of a Masonic fraternity. However, a 1957 pamphlet by the U.S. Government Printing Office, called the Seal of the United States, indicated that in 1885 a die may have been cut, but never used. Celestia Root Lang, editor and publisher of Divine Life magazine from the Independent Theosophical Society of America, wrote in 1917, the reverse side must have been designed by a mystic, one versed in symbolism. The time will come, when the white stone, pyramid capstone, will become the headstone of the corner of our government, in proclaiming a new religion in which all spiritual currents flowing from every religion shall meet in the perfection of the white stone, having neither dogma nor doctrine. We see in Mr. Barton only the facade of the instrument, that if he himself was not a mystic or seer, then, a master, thought to have been Thomas Paine, stood behind him. Arthur M. Schlesinger Jr. wrote in his book The Coming of the New Deal, that Vice President Henry A. Wallace, a Mason, was fascinated by the occult, and was impressed enough with the significance of the reverse side of the Great Seal to lobby Treasury Secretary Morgenthau to have it put on the back of the $1 bill in 1935. Wallace later ran for president as a socialist. What this gesture meant, was that the Illuminati had finally reached the point where they could set into motion their plans for the new world order by initiating the destruction of our constitution. The front side of the Great Seal, or the Eagle, is well known it is used to seal all governmental documents. The reverse side displays a pyramid, with an eye in the capstone and a Latin inscription around it. This seems to be a continuation of the Masonic symbolism found on the front. The number 13 is displayed prominently, and was thought to have referred to the 13 colonies. However, the number 13 was a mystical number to the Egyptians and Babylonians, and also the Masons. There are, 13 stars in the crest, 13 stripes and bars in the shield, 13 olive leaves, 13 olives. 13 arrows in the right claw, 13 feathers in the arrows, 13 letters in Anuit coiptus and quad, 13 letters in E pluribus unum and quad, 13 courses of stone in the pyramid, 13 by 9 dots in the divisions around the crest, 
It has been said that the cluster of 13 five-pointed stars above the head of the eagle is actually a representation of a hexagram, which is the most evil of all occult symbols, and is used to invoke Satan. This is not to be confused with the Star of David, Mogan David, or Seal of Solomon, which consists of two interlaced equilateral triangles, which symbolize the union of God and man. There are 32 long feathers on the right wing which represent the 32 degrees in Scottish Rite Masonry, and there are 33 feathers on the left, which represent the 33 degrees of York Rite Freemasonry. The pyramid has 13 levels, said to represent the 13 bloodlines, and within the capstone is an eye. It is not the eye of God, as we have been taught to believe. It stems from Masonic tradition, where it is known as the Eye of Horus, the Sun God, or the All-Seeing Eye, which refers to the protection of Providence, whose eye never slumbers nor sleeps, alluding to the Big Brother system of constant surveillance. To the Illuminati, it represents the Eye of Satan, who its members worship. The pyramid represents the organizational structure of the Illuminati, and the capstone containing the Eye, represents the House of Rothschild, who control the group, and have perpetuated the goal of one world government. Some sources claim that on the top level, the first block represents the Council of Thirteen, the Thirteen Most Powerful Witches, the second block represents the Council of Thirty-Three, Thirty-Three Highest Ranking Masons in the World, and the third block is the Council of Five Hundred, Five Hundred Richest People and Corporations in the World. According to the original Treasury Department press release of August 15, 1935, which gave details of the symbol being put on the back of the $1 bill, said the following, the eye and triangular glory symbolize an all-seeing deity. The pyramid is the symbol of strength and its unfinished condition denoted the belief of the designers of the Great Seal that there was still work to be done. Unquote. Notice they said deity, and not God. Unquote. The news release indicated that the Latin phrase Anuit Coiptus is translated as he, God, favored our undertakings, and comes from Virgil's Audacibus Anwe Coiptus or favor my daring undertaking, which refers to the golden age during which the Saturnian, Saturn was the father of Osiris, kingdom shall return. Novus Ordo Seclorum is translated as a new order of the ages, which is taken from Virgil's Magnus Ab Integro Seclorum Nasiter Ordo or the great series of ages begins anew. Unquote. To the Illuminati, the combination of these two Latin phrases is translated as, announcing the birth of a new secular order. Unquote. The date 1776, found at the base of the pyramid in Roman numerals, doesn't refer to July 4th, the date of the country's independence, but May 1st, when the Illuminati was founded. May 1st is also an international holiday for all workers, known as May Day, which was established in 1889 at the International Socialist Congress. Now, take a pen, and on the seal on the left side of the bill, find the word Anuit and draw a circle around the first letter A. Find the word Coiptus and draw a circle around the last letters. Find the word Novus and draw a circle around the first letter N. Find the word Ordo and draw a circle around the last letter O. Find the word Seclorum and draw a circle around the last letter M. Now, take your pen, and starting from and to the top of the capstone, back down to M and back over to N, utilizing the entire pyramid as one triangle. Then draw a line from A to Z then down to O and then back up to A which is the second triangle. Not only will you will see a representation of the six-pointed star, but you will also an anagram that spells the word M-A-S-O-N. The reverse side of the Great Seal, which can be found in the Meditation Room of the United Nations, has never been used to seal one document in this country's history, and it never will, because it is the seal of the Illuminati.